The leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Aipo, Namde Kanu, has claimed that First Lady Aisha Buhari has chased Gaba Shewu, President Muhammadu Buhari's special assistant on media and publicity out of Asurop. In a similar claim, Reno Mokri, former aide to ex President Gulok Jonathan, had said Gaba Shewu was not briefed about the appointment of a new chief of staff because he is now perceived as the head of the Kearis Kaba and has now become an enemy to Buari's wife, Aisha. Recall that the Daily Post contacted Shewu to confirm the appointment of Ibrahim Gambari on Tuesday. He said he had not been briefed about the appointment. Aisha Buari had late last year claimed that Gaba Shewu was no longer loyal to her husband, adding that the presidential aide had shifted his loyalty to a close relative of Buari, Mama Bo Edaura, who she accused of issuing a presidential directive behind the president. Aisha had alleged that Daura was issuing directives to Gaba Shewu not to recognize her office. Amid reports that President Muhammadu Buhari will announce his new chief of staff later today, Wednesday, Kano said that Aisha has already chased Shewu out of the presidential villa and this now compels him to wear visitor's tag. Now she's the boss. Gaba Shewu chased out of the villa and made to wear visitor's tag when visiting when visiting, Kanu said on Facebook, Nigerians, sorry, UTPs, I give you your newest unelected ruler, Her Excellency, Madam President Aisha Buhari. She succeeded the late and equally unelected President Abakari Jubri as Sudan. The poster boy is hiding. Hashtag Asirog is empty after COVID-19, to your tent, O Israel. <laughs> well, you know, whether what uh, Namdi said is true or not, but one thing I just uh, deduced yesterday, because Gabashi said that nothing, that he was not briefed about this uh, new appointment, and now uh, the new chief of staff, from what uh, we've been gathering, it's like he has assumed office, he's already in, uh, has already entered Asu Villa. There is no doubt about this thing because Aisha, eh, Aisha Buari has come out before now to say, oh, Gaba Shew this, Gaba Shew that, and all of that. And when Gaba Shew was asked, he said he didn't have anything to say that he wouldn't want to be exchanging ways with eh, his boss, eh, boss's wife. And it has just always been like that because eh, Aisha Buari is like, she's confronting every confrontable, anybody that, you know, that needs to be confronted, she's always confronting them. Because she believes that a lot of people are stopping power. Because there was a time she was calling on all APC men, Nigerian men, that they should wake up. That even while they were campaigning for election be before 2015, 2015, that she knew those who were working with her husband. She knew those they were working together with. But all of a sudden, she was not seeing all of those people. That the people that never worked uh, with them during that campaign before they came into office in 2015 he be she began to see them and they began to be more powerful and she cried as well normal way that nigerians react they will just talk they will not even say much thing but she has been able to come out to say yes there's a we know that there are cabals whether there is uh, there are cabals in the Asu rock that have been taking that that ruling they are just two she made mention of two or three that controlling over 200 million people up to date, you know, Buari will not say anything. Even when she accused Gabashi of being loyal to Mama Dara, Buari will not say anything. Anytime you hear Buari speak, it's when he will speak through Gabashi. And when Gabashi not, was not asked about it, this a new uh, chief of staff, he said he was not briefed. And immediately I knew that something uh, had gone wrong. Because for him to say he was not briefed, he would have come out outright to say, it's a fake it's fake news that there's nothing like that. But he said he was not briefed. You know, that is to tell you that you need to put one or two things together. And also, that means something for the fact that the new chief of staff is now in Asu Rock, that means something a lot of leakages have been going on. So that is there's no doubt about that. We've been having hearing about oh leaking of a Buari speech here and there and all of that. They will come and tell you that oh it is the work of the mischief makers or maybe opposition that is causing all those problems. Because within them they are having problems. 
And how do you expect the country to move forward? When things are happening, the president will not even speak. So even say hello, the vice president, the same thing. We don't even know what is happening. It is only Boss Mustafa that we are hearing from. Maybe occasionally we hear from uh, Lai Mohammed. So they are just playing drama. They are just playing drama, playing with the lives of Nigerians. Just see what they are doing. The vice president, the president, we cannot even see them. And people will be telling you that it does not matter. People are not even concentrated. People are not even saying anything. And everybody just keeping quiet. You know, we said it that every now and then, a lot of things will be unfolding. And that is the truth. A lot of things will be unfolding. And that is one of the things Namri Kano is saying. Anyone who is always like, oh, let's discard what this guy is saying. He does not know what he's talking about. But that is the fact. The issue of s men that he's been talking about all this while, they are, we are all witnesses to the atrocities. We are all witnesses to the activities. So what do we have to say about that? So even as this man comes up now, the new chief of staff, has he going to be seeing a lot of dramas? We are going to be hearing a lot of things from that uh, Asu Villa. Someone says the international community should, as a matter of fact, come to our rescue. Nigeria has no president. The man that is hiding in Asu Rock as, as the president of Nigeria is not Buhari. Please help. Nobody's coming to help us. We cannot have a... Even people people who are just like 5 million, 2 million. Do you know what it means to have a population of 1 million, not to talk of 2 million? Even population of 500,000. Do you know what it means? Not to talk of a, the kind of population we have and the kind of the kind of timber and caliber that we have in this country. Nobody could say anything. Even the journalists, the conventional... I mean the conventional journalists, I mean the uh, different groups. We have different groups. Di different groups that's you know that are supposed to be speaking up. We have at least here and there. People are not saying anything. Of course, it's not everybody that is corrupt. What is that? What is the problem? That people cannot even talk. Nobody is coming to help anybody. Nobody. No country is coming to help you because the only thing they want to even take advantage of you, they will want you to be in this kind of mess so that they will take advantage of you. If we are waiting for anybody to do anything, because um I would like put it. Whether technically or by paperwork or the way it's being structured. The Nigeria is a sovereign country. Nobody's coming to say, oh, you have to do this, you have to do this. The only thing they can just say, oh, maybe they don't want to have a relationship with you or your relationship with them or the bilateral relationship you have with them. They just have to cut it or to reduce it. That's it. But for them to come and say what, to come and do what with you, mm -mm. they are not going to <laughs> speak for you because like they always claim. And that is the truth. We are a sovereign country. There's a limit to which they can do. If we cannot help ourselves, if we cannot speak for ourselves, then we just have to bear it. We just have to continue like that. When we have intelligent people, both uh, within the country and outside the country, nobody is saying anything. Nobody is talking anything because everybody is afraid. Oh, you cannot fight the government because the way the government is being fought here, it's not as if you cannot fight the government. They don't want you to criticize them. If you criticize them, it's going to, it's going to, be, it's going to become a very, very big issue. Because they will want to rob you. They will want to manipulate a lot of things. But that is not the way it ought to go. You will criticize government for, from, you know, with the way things are going, with the way they do things. You need to criticize them. But they don't want that criticism. And that is why a lot of people are afraid. Because any little thing they want to tell me to uh, something else, just the same way they did to show worry. The same people were telling us about a revolution, this revolution, that, oh, even the masses were even saying he, he was not supposed to have used that statement, that that statement is so weighty. He would have used a, a minor word instead of that revolution. But at the end of the day, the court said they had no reason or the people that disrupted that uh, revolution now protest, that they had no right to say that. So does it mean those who are uh, senior advocates of uh, Nigeria, even when the whole thing was happening, Majority of them could not say anything, but we have a few people that really made mention of that, that that revolution is nothing, but they just wanted to rob the guy. And you see, the case, the case is still ongoing, and they are just holding the guy down. Let them charge him to court, and if he's going to uh, uh, go for jail time, we will know. But instead of just keeping him, because just like uh, the, the lawyer said that the government do not have a evidence against him because all the evidence they brought before the judge they were able to quash it so they're just leaving him there so it's just discouraging but we cannot just continue to keep quiet like this nobody's coming to help anybody someone says majority of nigerians are you know this one is using a, a derogatory word full of a sentiment no good iq for progress progressive reasoning as such no thinking faculties as uh, someone say that is very good news let's 
God arise and the enemy will scatter. Abakari and Shewu Gaba are the evil leaders meant to destroy Nigeria. How does that concern you, a Biafran? Even if uh, what you said is true, okay, even if what he said is true, he see, he, for the he say he doesn't want to belong to Nigeria. He's still a Nigerian, irrespective of what. Of course, I know he has a, a dual citizenship, but he see. <laughs> have every right to speak about Nigeria. All those people who are saying, uh, even if it is true, okay. So you, you know that even most of the things that uh, Namdi cannot talks, most of them you still believe them, but you are just refusing not to listen. You just refuse not to listen. Someone said here that say, uh, okay, say mind your business and leave Nigeria affairs alone. And another person is replying this particular person saying that say, uh, you know. If it is true, you are not worried, you know, because you don't, something is not, something is really wrong some way. God will overturn their table in the name of Jesus. Same Aisha chased Ka, uh, Kano coward out of Nigeria before he died in Italy. All those ones say, oh, now wash, oh, now wash, oh, now wash. Uh, someone says, uh, you are absolutely right, Mr. Kano. So, guys, uh, let us hear your opinion concerning a lot of these shenanigans. I don't know how long we are going to be keeping quiet with all of these things. Leave your comment below and let's have your take.